So in my last video, I took a look at the negative supply kit and described my experiences working with it over the past little bit over a year. If I'm paying any attention, I will link to it above. Anyway, this week I'm going to be showing some in-depth comparisons of that kit to some scanning setups that I've used in the past. So lab scans, Noritsu at max resolution, couple examples with Frontier at max resolution, couple Epson scanners. I'll show one example with a V600 that I had very briefly and returned, and a few examples with a V850, which is the best flatbed that Epson makes. And finally, some comparisons to some older camera scans I have with a 50-megapixel uh, camera rather than a 100-megapixel camera. Today, my examples are all going to be medium format, uh, mostly Mamiya 7, and I think people know that flatbeds are generally not a great choice for 35mm. They max out at maybe 27, 2800 DPI, and I think you want at least 3200-ish for 35. Um, but for medium format, that'll do okay. Of course, the comparison won't be perfectly scientific. I'm comparing scans I made three to five years ago with scans I made today, um, so my techniques are going to have changed a little bit. I still think it'll be informative. I'll put a bunch of caveats on the screen for those of you who are nerdy enough to care. So to start off, I will show a few examples from a single roll of Ektar that I had scanned as both Frontier at MaxRes and Noritsu at MaxRes. Always on the left, I will have my own scan. This is GFX100 with the GF120, which is a very sharp macro lens. On the right will be the competing scan. Note that for none of these have I attempted to make them look exactly the same. And of course I'm not saying that, for instance, the lab scans here are what you're always going to get. It will depend mostly on the operator and the procedure that they follow, and their personal taste. So in this case, despite asking for a flat scan, the Frontier scan I got is pretty contrasty. My own scan is a lot more airy, and in my opinion, the stereotype of a Frontier scan is that it's kind of yellow and warm and airy, and amusingly, my own scan I think looks more like my stereotype of a Frontier scan. I'll show on screen a picture of my Negative Lab Pro settings. They're very boring. I use Lab Standard with the Frontier lookup table and 4 saturation, which I think is considered normal. And I tweak the settings just a little bit for each image, and I definitely tweak the white balance per image to taste. I go for a pretty warm look. I'm shooting film, so safe to say I'm not necessarily looking for a perfectly neutral, scientifically correct view. Color preference will always be subjective, but I do prefer the color and tonality of my home scan in this comparison. So if we zoom in, I have my GFX scan at 67% and the Frontier scan at 100%. And I think the amount of detail resolved by each is similar if you look at the text here. Obviously my home scan is less sharpened. I did try to sharpen more than I normally would to try to match it a bit closer. So at least in this example, and maybe my scanning technique wasn't perfect because I was scanning strips and not whole rolls, the extra resolution didn't seem to help very much. So here I've zoomed out a little bit more because it wasn't quite fair. So 50% for my home scan and 100% for the Frontier scan. I think we can notice more color noise on the Frontier scan than on the home scan, although I have applied some color noise reduction to my scan, so perhaps that's not fair. If I look at the detail on this telephone pole, 
I think it's pretty similar in both cases. It's hard for me to not mix up contrast and acutance with actual sharpness. Now I've swapped out the Frontier image for the Noritsu image. The scan came in a bit green and blue, so I've white balanced it slightly yellow. Still, I'm not entirely happy with the white balance on the Noritsu scan. But overall, given that they scanned it flatter, I am reasonably happy with the tonality. And if we zoom in to look at detail near the center of the frame, these look pretty similar to me. I don't see a huge difference. I will say that I've probably used slightly less sharpening on my scan, and you can see some hopefully sharpening noise artifacts in here. So again, starting with the frontier comparison, one thing of course is that you lose a little bit of the edge with a lab scan. So you can see when I composed the shot, I wanted to get all of this little guard station at the naval base in, and the frontier shot loses that. Likewise, I composed it to get this column on the border here, and the frontier scan loses that. As with the last one, and again, not saying that this is just the way Frontier scans are, the operator scanned this with a lot more contrast than I asked for. In contrast to the last one, I think I might prefer the Frontier colors to my own colors. My own colors look a bit too stylized and filmy, and amusingly kind of like a stereotype of a Frontier scan. And the Frontier scan looks like more like my mental stereotype of a Noritsu scan. One interesting thing is this sign here. You can see the Frontier scan basically treats this as uniform gray-yellow, and my home scan picks up a fair bit of detail and brush marks in here. I think uniformly, home scans do better at retaining extreme highlight and shadow detail. It's not that the lab scans don't do fine, they do, just you get a little bit more. So again, I very roughly equated the size of these two images, and I have used more sharpening on my own scan than I would prefer. Overall level of detail toward the center is broadly comparable, but if anything, I think my scan might be a bit less sharp. Maybe I screwed up, maybe I didn't hold the negative perfectly flat. I was scanning strips instead of whole rolls, so maybe I had some curling, or part of the film was arcing up. Doing your own scans is hard work, and one thing I've noticed is sometimes your scan will be subtly screwed up, where if you scan it, and rescan it, and maybe scan it a third time, they won't all be just as sharp as each other, one will be better than the others. And when you look at the scan that's not as good, it still looks fine. Again, I still have my own scan on the left, and now I have the Noritsu on the right. Appreciate that the scanner operator scanned the Noritsu frame with the low contrast that I asked for. I probably marginally preferred the colors of the Frontier scan here. Again, the Noritsu scan, if we look at the tree up here, is probably less stylized, it's more true to life green versus the Frontier profile from Negative Lab Pro makes it more golden yellow. I do really like the warmth in the window shadow area over here compared to the more gray Noritsu scan. Again, we lose a little bit of the border, and again, we lose some highlight detail. Also just, I find the Noritsu scan a little bit weak on the saturation front, but obviously you can add that. In all the lab scans I will show you, unedited except otherwise mentioned, and again, I have not attempted to make the two images look identical. So here, comparing detail, I have my GFX scan at 67% and the Noritsu at full res, and they look pretty broadly comparable. I will say that hopefully you can pick up there are more sharpening artifacts on the Noritsu scan. This number 30, I think, might be slightly cleaner on the home scan. The cracks on these parking things look maybe a bit sharper on the Noritsu scan. I don't know if we're running into film limitations, or maybe I tried to use hyperfocal focus and I trusted the very optimistic markers on the Mamiya 7, not entirely sure, but I really don't see a whole lot of difference in sharpness. So because I have many more Noritsu scans than Frontier scans, let's jump over to another Noritsu example. Again on the left, this is my home scan on the GFX100, on the right, Noritsu. This image is Portra 400, by the way. So looking at the overall rendering, again, the lab was good at scanning the image with no added contrast, which is great, and the overall look of the two images is extremely similar. The sky looks a little bit more faded in my scan compared to the Noritsu, but otherwise it's pretty much a wash. So if we zoom in and look at this disabled parking sign and the wood grain in here, perhaps, it's writing 370 East. The two images have a very similar amount of detail to my eye. 
I think the text might be slightly crisper on the Noritsu scan, but the Noritsu scan also has more sharpening noise. And please forgive me for the imperfections on my negative. If we move up a bit and look at the sky, there's a very similar amount of highlight detail in each of these, so not really any trade-off there. And if we look at the shadows, again, broadly comparable. The noise profile is a little bit cleaner on the more modern sensor than on the old Noritsu scan, but I think they're both perfectly fine. So for our second Noritsu example, I'm looking at a Portra 400 negative, again, Mamiya 7 with the 80mm lens. And here you can see a bit of a difference in the color of the sea, but that's probably mostly just the choices that we made. So I think this is a good example of shadow detail differences. I think the details here in the shadows are a bit cleaner on the home scan. You can see the shadows are still kind of murky and starting to clip, but you can make out more detail here in the home scan than in the Noritsu scan. That's not to say I'm not happy with the Noritsu scan, I'd gladly take this, print it, whatever. Just saying that I can do a little bit better on shadow detail at home. For our final Noritsu example, I wanted to show differences in sharpness on a 100 speed T grain film across 100 version 1. And if we look at the text over here toward the left of the frame, arguably I think you can make out more detail on the Noritsu scan here. Although there's a big difference in sharpening and contrast, so it's hard to say exactly. It is also worth noting that there's noticeably more grain and noise in the Noritsu image, and the GFX image is quite a bit cleaner. So I think if you're looking at lab scans, you might think that your films are grainier than they are. So here we're going to hop over and look at the V600, which is Epson's lower end flatbed scanner, and unlike our past examples, this will be the Fuji GA645 RIP. Mine died after about six or ten rolls. I want to point out briefly some highlight retention. You can see that on my GFX scan, I've retained all the detail in these crazy specular highlights, and over on the Epson scan, we've lost a little bit. I can't say that my capturing technique with it was perfect at the time, but it is worth noting you'd probably see similar loss of highlight detail in a lab scan. Also worth noting on the GFX scan, there's not much flare here, but on the Epson scan, there is more flare. So now if we go in and look at detail, I think there are some pretty apparent differences. If you look at the windows here on this rendering of Salesforce Tower, or the text here, the differences aren't subtle. Likewise, in the building down here, in these metal things and the wood, the edges are a lot cleaner on the camera scan. Not sure how much of this is film differences, camera differences, etc. Would be a little bit silly if my GA645 was sharper at 1 to 1 than my Mamiya 7, but I think here it's probably a difference in scanners that we're seeing. So with our earlier examples with the Noritsu and even the Frontier, they could do a pretty good job capturing mostly everything that was on the negative, but with an entry-level flatbed scanner, we're leaving quite a bit on the table. Not saying this wouldn't be good enough, but you definitely have something to gain from upgrading. Next up, we'll look at two quick examples with the V850. And I believe the V850 is very similar to the V800. So obviously the white balance here is different. I think the white balance on my newer scan is probably more accurate, but I do enjoy the white balance of the Epson scan. Worth noting also I was using view scan and I was using the multi-shot mode. So it's rendered with an almost HDR look where you can see all this detail in the clouds. And that same detail is here in the GFX scan, but it's just not as emphasized. So here I'm at 100% on both of them, and I've applied the same sharpening settings to both, but the sharpening hasn't turned out quite the same, so the Mamiya 7 shot is looking a little more sharpened and also a little bit sharper. The text here on this Scrabble box, or the 551, or the grate here are definitely a bit cleaner on the camera scan, and it looks almost like there's a bit of fringing on the Epson scan. So now I turned down the sharpening a bit on the Mamiya 7 to try to make it a little bit fairer, and you can see that things have cleaned up a little bit, and the detail advantage is still there. Unlike the V600 scan, I would be happy with this V800, V850 scan, but I do think it's slightly hazy and unclear compared to a higher quality scan. So last example I'll show for the flatbed comparison, this is a Portra 400 shot on the Mamiya 7 like the last one, and... I haven't attempted to match the colors perfectly on my newer scan, I wanted to emphasize some of the green and blue, 
in the foliage. On the older scan, I probably went a bit truer to life and a little bit warmer. So if I remember correctly, this was right when I got my Mimi 7 back in like 2016-ish, and the rangefinder had drifted, so this is not in perfectly sharp focus, but I think there's a pretty apparent sharpness difference regardless. So on the Mamiya 7 image, you can see a lot more detail in the hair, eyelashes, and the Epson image looks a bit smoothed out. As with the last comparison, I thought the GFX image was looking a bit more sharpened, which wouldn't make it a very fair comparison. So I turned down the sharpening settings a bit to get them closer, and you can see the difference is still pretty clear. And I tried playing a little bit with the sharpening settings here, and I can't get the Epson to look any better. It's already starting to block up a bit in the skin tones, and if I push the sharpening anymore, it starts to look really, really bad. So last little bonus example, I'm going to be comparing the GFX 100 on the left to the GFX 50 on the right. And as you can probably imagine from the Noritsu comparison, if 30 versus 100 megapixels doesn't make really any difference, then 50 versus 100 probably isn't going to make any difference either. And you would be pretty right. So I've taken the GFX 100 out to 67%. Hard for me to get these the perfect exact same size in Lightroom. And also because the GFX 50 series had some funky micro lenses that basically mean at the same sharpening settings, the images will look more sharpened. So I'm using more sharpening on the GFX 100 image. This is on Tmax 400, so the sharpest 400 speed film you can find, arguably. If we look in at the various writing on this sign or the cracks on this sign up here, I really don't see any difference. Possibly because it's a more recent sensor or because of differences in the sharpening, the GFX 100 does look a little bit cleaner. There's a little bit more noise on the GFX 50. Again, could just be a sharpening difference. And again, if we look at this portion of the image, the 50 image, despite having lower sharpening settings, looks a little bit more sharpened honestly a bit over sharpened, and the amount of detail captured looks to be super similar to my eyes. So my thoughts, so starting off talking about color here, I actually expected to prefer lab scans and I didn't really find that to be the case. The lab scan color was always at least good, but a little bit hit or miss, and I was generally pretty happy actually with the colors I could achieve myself in Negative Lab Pro. The Epson scans are pretty old and Negative Lab Pro didn't exist at the time, so I was relying on either Silverfast or ViewScan um, to handle the colors for me, and the colors on those are a little bit funky, but not necessarily bad. Still, I prefer Negative Lab Pro for colors, and I don't think I showed these, but also looking at manual inversion, it's really hard and painful. Highly not recommended. Be grateful we have tools to do it for you now. Second, sharpness. Here is where I expected camera scanning to blow the others away, and while I did find that it did a little bit better, I thought the differences were actually pretty subtle. In particular, comparing the 50 megapixel scans to the 100 megapixel scans, there really wasn't much advantage of the 100 megapixel scans, and the Epson scans definitely lagged a little, but honestly they were still pretty much fine. This is even with some examples being from 100 speed T-grain film, which should really emphasize the differences. In general, if you're buying a camera largely to scan, I wouldn't bother going past 40, 50 megapixels, you're not going to gain much. Next up, dynamic range. Honestly, I didn't really find this to be an issue with any of them. With the Epson, I used to use the multiple exposure feature, so it would blend those exposures and never had issues with clipped whites in that case. Um, clipped shadows, I'm less concerned about. I honestly think clipped shadows can help a lot of the time, make things not so perfect and a little bit mysterious and moody. Regardless of that, I didn't find clipped shadows to be an issue on any of these. In the example I showed with the Big Sur rocks, I think you could see that the shadows were a bit cleaner and less noisy in the digital camera scans than in the lab scans, but I'd be content with either, honestly. With lab scans, you do have to make sure to tell your lab not to scan with too much contrast, and then you have to hope that the person scanning your photos happens to pay attention. You're also working with typically 8-bit JPEGs, which don't have that much latitude to be pushed. Next up, noise. I honestly wasn't planning on talking about this, but I couldn't help but notice that the Epson scans had a bit of this weird, splotchy, digital-looking noise in them that bugged me a bit. The NERS2 scans did okay on noise, but I noticed in some instances the scanner operator really pushed the sharpening setting up and it made the noise a bit excessive. The camera scans, on the other hand, were uniformly quite clean, and if you're scanning at ISO 100, I don't imagine you'll have any issues in that regard. 
So in conclusion, I actually came away from this thinking I'd be happy with any of the setups I showed here. I think the biggest reason for me not to use a flatbed is just because it's so slow and painful with the sharpness being another slight downside and the noise. Good lap scans are expensive, but I would be content with them. And assuming that you don't mind spending the little bit of time to do your own scans and the one-time cost of getting a scanning setup together, I was happiest with the home scans. Again, I don't think it's rocket science. Get a halfway decent film holder, like probably an essential film holder. I've heard lots of good things about of course, the negative supply holders are good too. And a modern camera, ideally with 40 megapixels or more, and a modern macro lens, and you should have super good scans that will outdo any lab. That is it. Hope you found these comparisons useful, and let me know if you have any comments or questions below. I appreciate your taking the time to watch the video, and uh, we'll see you next month.